committed to the ideals of good sportsmanship, safety, and fair play. We ask all fans, coaches, and players to show respect for the opposing team, game officials, and each other before, during, and after today's game. Persons throwing objects or participating in other acts in conflict with good sportsmanship, safety, and fair play are subject to ejection and prosecution. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. Just a reminder, a reminder, today's game will be live streamed on letsgoicc.com. That's letsgoicc.com. Today's lineup for your 2014 South Divisional Champions and number two in the nation, Jones Lady Bobcat. <laughs> Leading off and playing center field, number six, Cece Long. Batting <laughs> second and playing DP, number 27, Kimberly Nielsen. Batting third and playing first, number 20, Tori Doom. <laughs> Batting fourth and playing shortstop, number 11, Lauren Holyfield. <laughs> Batting fifth and playing third, number 30, Brittany Seal. <laughs> Batting sixth and playing second base, number 16, Mackenzie Hawkins. <laughs> Batting seventh. And playing catcher, number 15, Bailey Stokes. Yeah. Batting eight, and playing right field, number 21, Reagan Gavin. Yeah. Batting ninth, and playing left field, number 18, Savannah Lyon. Yeah. And on the mound, pitching for the Lady Bobcats, number 24, Savannah Bullard. Yeah. The head coach. Is Chris Robinson. He is assisted by Bob Harrington and Carlos Castro. And now the 2014 Gulf Coast Lady Bulldogs. <laughs> Leading off at shortstop number two, Ashley Hickman. And at and batting second, yeah, catcher number 16, Danny Kraft. Batting third, playing second base, number nine, Emily Davis. Batting fourth, right field, number six, Brooke Gaston. Batting fifth, first base, number 13, Brittany Butler. Batting sixth, and playing third, number 22, Brooke Ladner. Batting seventh, left field, number eight, Coco Bender. Batting eight, your DP, number 14, Elise Richardson. Batting ninth, center fielder, number seven, Kat Campbell. On the mound, 
pitching for the Lady Bulldogs, number five, Paige Brill. The head coach is Kenneth Long, assisted by Ashton Nelson. Ladies and gentlemen, remove your hats and please rise for our national anthem. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, out to the MACJC Softball Championship game, the first of a possible two championship games today here in Fulton between Jones County and Gulf Coast. Jones County, the number two ranked team in the nation. And Gulf Coast, well, they battled their way through the loser's bracket to get here on Saturday. So Gulf Coast will actually have to win this one and the second game, which is slated for 3 o'clock today in order to win the 2014 championship. We're in the top of the first. There's no score. Let's take a look at today's pitchers. In the circle is going to be Paige Brill for Gulf Coast. And for Jones County, it's Samantha Buller. Brill will be facing the 1-2-3 batters here. CeCe Long, Kimberly Nielsen, and Tori Dew for Jones County. Jones has only given up one run in the state tournament so far. They won nine to nothing against this Gulf Coast team in the first game of the tournament in five innings. Then was able to knock off Pearl River four to one in the semifinal game. Gulf Coast defeated ICC and Pearl River to get here in today's championship. So a loud crowd is here today at the ballpark. Another great turnout. We do want to thank everyone that has made their way out to Fulton this week and also everyone that has helped with the tornado relief efforts this weekend as well. we got the home plate umpire that's going to uh, sort of – he says something with both head coaches before the start of this one. Not really sure what that was about, but either way it goes, we're moments away from our first American National Bank opening pitch. This is CeCe Lawn ready to dig in here. For Jones, takes the first American National Bank open pitch, low and outside for a ball. Second pitch finds the corner of the plate just up enough for the strike. He was the count now at one and one. A beautiful day for softball out here at the ICC Softball Complex. Showed bunt that time, pulled back high for ball two. 
Got to give credit where credit's due to the guys that have uh, worked really hard. And they're up here in the press box with us. All keeping this field in shape for all the games this weekend. And throughout the entire season, there's a dribbler down the line. Push just foul. Now the count goes 2-2 two and two here on Lawn. We'll give you your Coca-Cola defensive setup here after this pitch. 2-2 two -two pitch coming. It's high and inside. In the circle for Gulf Coast is Paige Brill. Then you look around the infield. You've got Brooke Ladner at third. Ashley Hickman is your shortstop. Emily Davis is at second. And Brittany Butler is at first. Now this shot is lifted. It's going to drop for a base hit. Salon works the count full and comes up with the leadoff single here in the top of the first. And now that will bring up Kimberly Nielsen with no outs here. The DP for Jones County. Behind the plate for Gulf Coast is Danny Kraft. And in the outfield, you've got Coco Bender in left. Center fielder is Cat Campbell. And right field is Brooke Gaston. This pitch is fouled back for strike one. That's your Coca-Cola defensive lineup for Gulf Coast. On first is CC Lawn. There's no outs. We're in the top of the first inning. It's a scoreless ball game. Attempted to bunt that one. It's bunted foul. And 0-2 now is the count on Kimberly Nielsen. On deck is Tory Dew, the first baseman for Jones. Swings on this one. Fouls it out of play. Count stays 0-2. As we talked about, Jones only has two losses this season, and I believe one of them belongs to Gulf Coast. So Gulf Coast has a little bit of confidence against this number two team in the nation. Of course, Jones County will be hosting next week's Region 23 tournament. That will feature Jones, Gulf Coast, Pearl River, and LSU Eunice. You can watch those games on jcjc.tv. That pitch high for a ball. One and two now goes to count here on Nielsen. The wind blowing in today. It's that pitch high. Now the count evens up at two and two. So a good job by Nielsen who fell behind the count quickly. 0-2. She's fouled off a couple of pitches. Has now worked the count even here at two and two with no outs in the top of the first. That pitch high for a ball. So now the count goes full on Nielsen. Outfield is playing her straight away. Pitch is coming, hits that one, fouls it back and out of play. Count will stay full. So payoff pitch coming from Brill. And just misses that time as Kraft held on to that pitch. Thinking it was strike three and held a little extra long that time for the umpire to look at it. Number 20, first baseman, Tori Dew. And it looks like the umpire may have even had something to say to her after the exaggerated hold that time, but it looked pretty close. But either way it goes, that was a walk. Now runners on first and second for Jones, no outs. And this is Tori Dew. We've already documented Tori's season. She pretty much leads the nation in any stat category ever invented. Batting well over 600 coming into the season. As this pitch has popped up, third baseman, shortstop, talking it over. No, dropped it. The throw across the way is in time. And not only is the Jones coach, but also C.C. Lohn arguing with the call. So that one is going to be an official... Fielder's choice with the put out six to five. I don't know if the ball was in foul territory when she originally touched it. But hey, you know, we saw other foul balls count and turn for runs this uh, in this tournament. Number 11, shortstop, Lauren Holyfield. And Jones coach did ask down that time if the ball was foul. Home plate umpire said no. And so now with one away, runners on first and second, and this is Lauren Holyfield, the shortstop for Jones County. 
Holyfield takes that first pitch outside for a ball. This pitch popped up, going to drift back out of play, and it's going to send some fans scattering. And it looked like it either hit or barely hit a young fan out in the audience. But she appears to be okay. And so the count now is one and one with one out now. We are in the top of the first inning. It's scoreless between Jones and Gulf Coast. There's a pitch. It's lifted out to center field. Center builder tracking back, makes the catch. And the runners did not advance, so two away now here in the inning. And Gulf Coast fans get a little fired up now behind their defense as they're trying to get out of the jam here in the top of the first. Now up will be Brittany Seal, the third baseman for Jones. That pitch across the plate for a strike. That one in there for a strike. So quickly ahead is Brill in the count. 0-2. O2 oh, pitch coming for Brill. Outside for a ball. Gulf Coast fans. Not liking that call. This is another borderline pitch. You got to figure with her establishing that corner that she'll eventually start getting that call from the umpire as she has consistently gone for it and it's been consistently close as well. That pitch fouled off. The count stays one and two now. On Seal. If Seal were to reach the McKenzie Hawkins, the second baseman would be up for Jones. So it's a 1 2 count here on Seal. Scoreless with two outs and runners on first and second. This pitch lifted and it's going to get out of play as both the first baseman and second baseman charged after it. And so no damage done there as the count now stays one and two. One, two pitch coming and that one fouled off. So Seal is battling at the plate right now. Trying to keep this Hitting alive with two outs. One and two is your count. And this shot down the line. Foul ball. That had two runs written all over it if it would have stayed fair, but it still drifted foul. And we will stay with the one and two count here. Because this is a battle between Gulf Coast. Brill and Jones seal. That pitch is high. Count goes two and two. So 2-2 two -two pitch coming. Inside low for a ball. 3-2 now is the count here on Brittany Seal. Three-two pitch coming, and she fouls that one off. There's been at least six foul balls in this at bat. So Seal has been at the plate for a while now. Three-two pitch, or excuse me, three-two is the count. Pitch coming. This pitch lifted. Right fielder charging up. And makes the play. So Gulf Coast gets out of the inning with no damage done. No runs on one hit and no errors. Two were left stranded. We'll move to the bottom of the first right after this.
Hey, welcome back to action. As we move to the bottom of the first inning, we're scoreless between Jones and Gulf Coast. This is Ashley Hickman, the shortstop for Gulf Coast. That will lead things off. That first pitch, just low for a ball. This is Samantha Buller in the circle for Jones. And has it been all week, this Gulf Coast dugout has been vocal and active throughout the entire tournament. Very entertaining. That pitch across for a strike. This is Hickman that's at the plate. Dribbler to the shortstop. Gloves throws over in time. Well, I say in time, just in time for the 6-3 to three put out for the first out here in the bottom of the first. That'll bring up the catcher, Danny Kraft, for Gulf Coast. And on deck will be the second baseman, Emily Davis, for the Bulldogs. That pitch high and outside for a ball. Well, both these pitchers like to go for that outside corner, and so far in the contest, the umpire hasn't given, them, given it to them. But you think after they try to establish that, They'll eventually get it. This pitch popped up. First baseman drifting over in foul territory and makes the play. Two away. And now Emily Davis will come to the bat to try to spark a two-out rally here. We're scoreless in the bottom of the first inning here in the first of a possible two games for the MACJC softball title. Swing and a miss by Davis. Davis plays second base for Gulf Coast. If she were to reach, then Brooke Gaston, the right fielder, would be up. That pitch outside for a ball. Evens the count now at one and one. This pitch popped up. Drifting foul. Third baseman moves over and gets the out. Three up, three down inning for Gulf Coast. We've played one, and we're scoreless. No runs, no hits, no errors. We'll be back with more right after this. And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen, as we move to the top of the second inning. The 6-7-8 batter due up here for Jones. They'll be led off by the second baseman, Mackenzie Hawkins. Hawkins having a nice turnout of family and friends as she is from the Nelton area. Stands in and takes that pitch for strike one. That pitch low for a ball, even up the count now at one and one. In the first inning, Jones had a leadoff walk, or excuse me, a uh, leadoff single by CeCe Lawn. Then Kimberly Nielsen followed with a the walk. There's a shot over the shortstop's head. And for the second straight inning, Jones County leads the inning off with a single. But after getting the first two base runners on, Gulf Coast. 
was able to get out of the inning with no damage done. Now up will be Bailey Stokes, the catcher for Jones. Hawkins is on first. There's no outs in a scoreless top of the second inning. Jones County going for their third straight state title. Is that pitch high and outside for a ball? 2-0 is the count now on Stokes. Gavin is on deck, the right fielder for Jones. That pitch finds the zone for a strike. 2-1 and one now goes the count on Stokes. And that pitch finds the outside corner. As in the first inning, that one was typically called a ball, but now the umpire, see if these umpires, or excuse me, see if these pitchers are going to go after that corner consistently, going to open it up a little bit. This pitch popped up, back and out of play. Count will stay at 2-2 two and two on Stokes. Brill take a little extra time on this pitch. 2-2 two -two pitch coming to Stokes. That pitch outside for a ball. Now the count goes full. Runner on first with no outs. 3-2 count to Stokes. Stokes pops this one up. Short stop. Taking a few, few steps back. Shallow outfield and gets the out. So one away now with Hawkins on first and Gavin coming to the plate. The right fielder, Reagan Gavin, she had a big-time home run. A three-run shot against Gulf Coast in, the first in their first game of the tournament. That pitch across for a strike. On deck is Savannah Lyon, the left fielder. This pitch fouled off. 0-2 now goes to count on Gavin. O2 pitch. Just high for ball one. Nice job coming back inside after the pitcher, or excuse me, the batter had reached out after the last two pitches. See if she couldn't get her to chase one on the inside. There's a shot. Shortstop couldn't get to it. And a single for Gavin. Now there's runners on first and second. There's one out. And looks like Brill and Kraft are going to talk things over here, try to get on the same page as Brill called out her catcher that time. Left fielder Savannah Lyon. So Savannah Lyon will dig in, the number nine batter here. This is where Jones was in the last inning. They had runners on first and second, but couldn't do anything with them. Lyon swings on the first pitch, fouls it back and out of play for strike one. Well, you got to have a heads up in the fans today because there have been a lot of foul balls by both these teams. The wind is blowing in towards center field. This pitch hit and is fouled out of play. 0-2 now is the count here is Savannah Lyon and she's battling with one out. Runners on first and second. We're scoreless in the top of the second inning here in the first of a possible two championship games today here in Fulton. Gulf Coast would have to win game one to force a game two. That pitch apparently just high. One and two now is the count on Lyon. 
And that pitch might have been a little bit of a makeup call after that last one. And that's your first pit stop barbecue strikeout of the afternoon for Paige Brill. So now two away. And we go back to the top of the lineup for CeCe Lawn, the center fielder. She singled her first time up, but was out on a questionable fielder's choice in the first. Lawn takes that first pitch for a strike. Brill trying to work out of a jam for the second straight inning here. That pitch low in the dirt. Nice job that time by Kraft to find that one and keep the runners at first and second. Lawn lifts one. Left fielder drifting out and makes the play. So for the second straight inning, Gulf Coast finds a way out of a jam. No runs off two hits. Two were left stranded. We'll move to the bottom of the second. We're still scoreless. And welcome back to action now as we move to the bottom of the second inning. It's a scoreless contest here between Jones and Gulf Coast. The four, five, six batters do up here for Gulf Coast. Brooke Gaston at the plate. She is the right fielder. Takes that first pitch for a strike. Gaston, Butler, and Ladner do up here in the bottom of the second inning. This pitch hit and foul back. And out of play, 0-2, quickly ahead in the count, is Buller. This pitch hit, lifted, drifting, foul, and out of play. She put a charge into it, but just couldn't keep it in fair territory. And so 0-2. Remains the count on Gaston. Pitching high and outside. See if she could get her to chase one that time. Was able to hold off. One and two now. Goes the count. There's a shot to third. Glove cleanly. Throw across the way. It's in time for the out. Nice play at third that time by Seal. So one away here in the bottom of the second inning brings up Brittany Butler, the first baseman for Gulf Coast. As anticipated today, we will see a pitcher's duel between these two teams. And that's what we've got so far. That pitch across for a strike from Bueller, or excuse me, Buller. I have been calling her Bueller all week, so I do apologize for any of her family that's watching on Let's Go ICC.com. Pitch lifted, and it's an out. No, 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 she dropped it. Wow, that turned into an amazing play, but when she rolled over with the ball, it come flying out of her glove. I just, I, I can't give it an error on that one, as that was just an amazing play to get to the ball. We'll call it a lucky single, if you will, for Butler. 
So one out and runner on first. This is Brooke Latner, the third baseman. She showed butt but pulled back for ball one. And that was the first hit of the day. That first of the day, excuse me, for Gulf Coast as that pitch is high for a ball. That pitch finds the outside corner. As we said, we figured the home plate umpire would adjust his strike zone as he saw both pitchers are going for that outside corner. And he did adjust to what the pitchers are going after. Ladner shows butt, attempted at it, and it's a strike. Two and two is the count here on Ladner. Swings on this one, pops it up. It's trouble. It's going to drop. Snap throw over to second is in time. Not a whole lot. that Butler could do that time. She had to check up to make sure she wouldn't get doubled up if it was caught. Fielder, eight, Coco and then by the time it dropped, a good throw to second got her for the second out. Now this will bring up Coco Bender, the left fielder for Gulf Coast with two outs. She pops this one up. And the pitcher had it, then dropped it. Nobody covering third. Now we got the runner trying to go to third and gets her out. So a running mistake that time. Gets Jones County out of the jam. Official error that time on the pitcher. Two to five on the putout. As Ladner that time stopped instead of running straight to third. If she would have made a beeline straight to third from second when nobody was covering, she would have been safe easily that time. But instead, the break goes the way of Jones County. We've played two, and we're scoreless here between Jones and Gulf Coast. Back with more right after this. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As the two, three, four batters do up here for Jones, this is Kimberly Nielsen, the DP at the plate. Swings on the first pitch, hits a line drive out to center field. And once again, Jones gets the leadoff batter on. Didn't even have a chance to tell you what Nielsen did her first at bat. She walked her first time up, so this is the second time she's reached today. And now up will be the first baseman, Tori Dew. Tori Dew reached on a fielder's choice her first time up. That pitch high and inside for a ball. Lauren Holyfield on deck for Jones. She is the shortstop. That pitch finds the corner of the plate for a strike. One and one is the count here on due. We're scoreless in the top of the third inning between Gulf Coast and Jones. That pitch low and in the dirt for a ball. Gulf Coast with the yellow tops on defense and Jones all white at the plate. That pitch just outside for a ball. 
Three of one is the count now here on Tory Dew. Runner on first with no outs here in the top of the third. Rip down the line, but foul. Three two is now the count here on Dew. That pitch just low misses the zone. And Dew will trot down to first base. So now there's runners on first and second with no outs. Jones has been in this situation so far in all three innings. And Gulf Coast has done a great job of getting out of the inning with no damage done. Now up is going to be Lauren Holyfield, the shortstop. She flew out to center in her first at bat of the day. This pitch popped up. It's going to roll foul and out of play. Jones has four hits so far in the contest to one for Gulf Coast. We're scoreless in the top of the third inning. Runners on first and second for and no outs for Jones. There's a shot lifted. Left fielder goes back. It's off the wall. One run will score. They're going to hold up the runner at third, and that will be a stand-up double for Lauren Holyfield. And we have our first run of the day for Jones. So a big hit that time for Holyfield. And so now that will bring up Brittany Seal. There's still no outs. Runners on second and third. So trying to just settle our pitchers down. You're starting to hear the Jones faithful get behind their team here. If the umpire went and retrieved a Couple more softballs, as we've seen a lot of foul balls today. This is Brittany Seal. Stands in, takes that pitch for a strike. One and one is now the count. Seal flew out to right to end the first inning in her first at bat of the day. Comes in with a great opportunity to build on this one to nothing lead in the top of the third. That pitch high for a ball. Two and one. Now the count. Pitch low and inside. Three one is the count here on Seal. Runners on second and third. Seal rips one. Shortstop makes a great play on the ball. Throw across the way in time for the out. Great defensive play that time by Ashley Hickman. Diving to her left. Makes the stab and the stop, checks the runners to keep the run from scoring, and then throws out Seal at first for the first out of the inning. Now up will be Mackenzie Hawkins. She singled to lead off the second in her first at bat. Swings on that one. It's going to be down for a base hit. One run will score. They're going to hold her up at third. And so Hawkins, two for two on the day, her first RBI of the afternoon, and it scores Tory Dew. And two to nothing is now your score in favor of Jones. Catcher Bailey Stokes. Now up will be Stokes. There's one out. We're in the top of the third with runners on the corners for Jones. 
They lead two to nothing. That first pitch of ball. This pitch, they go for a check swing. They're going to say she did commit. There's a shot lifted to center field. Center Vendor chasing over. It's deep enough. There's a throw home, and it's not in time. The ball gets away. Now Hawkins will advance to second. So a sacrifice fly by Stokes scores Holyfield, and Hawkins advances on the throw. So 3 nothing now is your score. Gavin, that pitch, a wild pitch, and Hawkins will advance to third. So now the runner, a little bit closer to home here, a base hit, will score a run. Gavin hit hard to the shortstop, gets it across the way, throw in time, and gets the out. But... Jones with a big inning, plates three runs on three hits, no errors. One was left stranded. We move to the bottom of the third. Gulf Coast going to try to get their bats fired up and rally in this one. And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen, as we move to the bottom of the third inning. Jones leads three to nothing. This is Elise Richardson, the DP at the plate. She fouled that first pitch back for strike one. That pitch high for a ball. One and one is the count. So we do have a little action in the uh, Gulf Coast bullpen across the way. That pitch hit straight back to Buller and a nice job defending her position that time as the ball skipped off her glove and hit her, but was able to find it quick enough to throw across the way and get out number one. Now it will be the number nine batter, Cat Campbell, for Gulf Coast. Campbell swings on the first pitch. Shortstop basically takes one step up as it was hit straight to her for out number two. 
So two away now here in the bottom of the third inning. Jones County leading game one of a possible two-game championship Sunday here. Three to nothing. Hickman back to the top of the lineup. We go. They're going to appeal down. They're going to say she went. Once again, there's really no set definition of what is considered a check swing and what's not considered a check swing. It's more of an opinion-based call by the first base our infield judge has to say is that pitch low and in the dirt. The Governor Sean Wansley in the press box now. You can check out stories from this week's tournament as well as photos and much, much more as this ball is lifted. And it's going to be a fly out for a three up, three down inning for Gulf Coast. We've played three. Your score, Jones County three, Gulf Coast zero. We move to the fourth right after this. And welcome back to action now as we move to the top of the fourth inning with Jones County coming to the plate and leading three to nothing over Gulf Coast. This is the MAC JC Softball Championship game. We do appreciate everyone watching here on Let's Go ICC.com. As well as following along on Twitter, you can follow us at Let's Go ICC on Twitter. That pitch finds a quarter for a strike. That pitch drifts high for a ball. This one dribbled ahead. Grill had it, lost it, but then finds it again for the putout. One to three on the putout if you're scoring at home. And now we go back to the top of the lineup here for Jones. And this will be CeCe Long, the center fielder. CeCe, one for two on the day. She singled her first time up, but was thrown out on a fielder's choice. Flew out to left in her last at bat. Of course, that fielder's choice, a little questionable early on in the game. That pitch right across the heart of the plate for strike one. Oh, and one is the count here on Lawn. She's been in that leadoff position all tournament long. She has pretty good speed, and she stole a couple of bases in this tournament. And really. Kind of no doubters when she stole as well. That pitch low and outside. Two of one now goes to count here on lawn. On deck is Kimberly Nielsen, the DP. She's one for one with a walk and a run scored along with a single. Lawn butts, but this one's going to roll foul. And so tried a little surprise butt that time. He was of the count at two and two. Two 
2-2 pitch coming, and it's fouled off. Nice job by the Jones County coach making the barehanded play. There at third on a hard hit ball. This slap hit lifted to right. Right fielder drifts over a couple of steps for out number two. So quickly, two away here in the top of the fourth inning. Jones leading three to nothing with Kimberly Nielsen coming to the plate. As we said, Kimberly singled and scored a run her last time up. Takes that first pitch low for a ball. If Nielsen were to reach, then Tory Dew would be up next for Jones County. That pitch across for a strike. One and one now is the count here with two outs. Top of the fourth, Jones trying to build on their 3-0 lead. This pitch popped up. Second baseman calling everyone off and makes the play. So a three-up, three-down inning for Jones. Gulf Coast coming to bat, trying to get back in this one, trailing three to nothing. And hey, welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen, as we move now to the bottom of the fourth inning. The 2-3-4 batters do up here for Gulf Coast, Kraft, Davis, and Gaston. All three of those batters looking for their first hit of the day as Gulf Coast only has one hit this afternoon, and they trail three to nothing. Had the music run a little long that time. Had a little Travis Tritt playing. Can't blame Buddy Wayne for letting that one play a little extra as the umpire stepped back and had a little dance. Steps back behind the plate and calls that one for a strike one. This is Kraft, the catcher. She flew out to first in foul territory in her first at bat. Takes that pitch for strike two. Buller quickly ahead in the count. That pitch a little low, see if she couldn't get her to chase one that time. Didn't do so. One and two is now the count. Like a change up that drifted a little high that time. Catcher dancing around and finds it. So the second time this game that Kraft has been retired in foul territory as Stokes that time had the helmet caught everybody off and threw the helmet off and then actually caught it on her hip so a little adventurous on that out so what a way now and this is going to be the second baseman Emily Davis up she swings on the first pitch fouls it back and scares a few of the fans we do encourage fans not to pull a net or lean into it, and that would be one of the reasons why, but a lot of times they don't listen. 
That pitch high and outside for a ball. One and one is now the count here on Davis with one out in the bottom of the fourth. Davis grounds one up the middle. And that'll be a base hit, the second hit of the day for Gulf Coast. They trail three to nothing here in the bottom of the fourth. As we talked about at the start of the game, Gulf Coast would have to win this game to force a second championship game today as Jones County has, well, let's put it bluntly, they pretty much ran rough shot in this tournament. Scoring 13 runs, only giving up one so far. And that one run does belong to Gulf Coast. So a runner on first, one out. That first pitch goes for a ball. Swung on, and it's hit and goes foul. He's with the count now at one and one. That same type play was somehow ruled a fair ball for Pearl River against ICC yesterday. And eventually scored a run. One of these weekends where the breaks beat the girls for ICC. But it was a great record-breaking season for the Lady Indians. This pitch foul back and out of play. One and two now goes to count here on Brooke Gaston. On deck is Brittany Butler. Before this inning, she was the only Lady Bulldog that had a hit. Nice changeup. Beautiful pitch. And that's a pit stop barbecue strikeout, the first of the game for Buller. I tell you, when you can get that changeup working, you can do stuff like that. And that time Gaston goes down looking, didn't like the call, but a beautiful pitch. First pitch swung on, drifting, drifting foul, and out of play. And the dugout got in the way, but that might have been one of the best efforts for a foul ball I've ever seen as the right fielder, second baseman, and first baseman all collided with each other and the fence at the same time. That pitch high for a ball. One and one now goes to count with two outs and a runner on first for Gulf Coast as they trail three to nothing here in the bottom of the fourth. That pitch outside for a ball. 2-1. Now the count on Butler. Butler, as we said, singled her first time up but was left stranded. Dribbler, short stop, can't find it. It's going to drift out to center field. And so a two-out single, and now Butler has a pair of hits in the afternoon. And so now, Gulf Coast with their best opportunity so far in the contest. Runners on first and second. They trail three to nothing in the bottom of the fourth. And now Brooke Ladner, the third baseman, is coming to the plate. She reached on a fielder's choice and was actually thrown out trying to advance to third after an error on the pitcher. And that ended the second inning. This pitch lifted. It's going to drop, and Eric's going to score a run. So a two-out single by Ladner. Scores Davis, and the score now 3-1. to one. So a nice two-out rally going here for Gulf Coast. So now up will be Coco Bender. She swings on the first pitch. It's lifted foul. Third baseman goes over and makes the play for the out. One run on three hits. No errors. And two were left on the bags. We've played four. Gulf Coast trails this one three to one to Jones County. Back with more right after this.
And welcome back as we move now to the top of the fifth inning. Three to one, Jones leading Gulf Coast here in the championship of the first of a possible two championship games as that first pitch across the plate from Brill for strike one. Dew has reached both times. Her last time up, she walked and scored a run. Her first time up reached via fielder's choice. And there's a hard hit ball past the shortstop. And once again, Jones County gets the leadoff runner on. They have done that in all five innings this afternoon. And now this will bring up Lauren Holyfield, the shortstop. She doubled to drive in a run and eventually scored a run as part of that three-run third inning for Jones County. So a runner on first with no outs. Nice pitch that time across the heart of the plate for strike one. Well, this game has been everything we expected it then some. A great pitching duel. Both these teams have produced runs. Jones able to have a two-run lead right now. Is that pitch a carbon copy of the last one for strike two? 0-2 oh, is the count here. Swung on a high fastball. It's going to drop. And it'll be back-to-back -back singles now for Jones as their bats are starting to heat up. So runners on first and second with no outs. And now Brittany Seal, who is 0 for 2 on the day, will dig in. Seal shows butt, pops it up, and they're going to turn two. Just didn't execute on the bunt that time. A great play by the catcher to come up and get the pop out and not hesitate to throw out the runner at first. So a two to three double play turned that time. And that was a big, big help there for Brill as now she has two outs, a runner on second, and Mackenzie Hawkins, who is two for two on the day with a pair of singles and an RBI, is at the plate. That first pitch high and outside for a ball. That pitch finds his own. Evens up the count now at one and one. Well, Brill has done a great job today finding ways to get out of the jam except for that third inning. And there's a shot right back up the middle. Looks like they're going to try to score the run. No, they're going to check her up at third. And Hawkins with authority on that one. She is three for three on the day. So the Nettleton native wanting to come out and have a big day in front of fans and her family and friends here in Fulton. As a two-out single keeps the inning alive and now up will be Bailey Stokes. Bailey had a sacrifice fly to center to drive in a run her last time up. Her first time up, she popped out to short. If Stokes were to reach, then Reagan Gavin would be up next. Runners on the corner. Two out. Top of the fifth. Swings on the first one. This one lifted. Center fielder drifting over. Calls everyone off and makes the play. So no runs off three hits and no errors. And that was a big, big time play once again by Brill to get out of the jam. We move to the bottom of the fifth. Jones leading three to one.
And welcome back to actually move now to the bottom of the fifth inning. Jones County leading three to one here over Gulf Coast. Gulf Coast did get a run back that last inning on an RBI single by Brooke Ladner to score Emily Davis. 14, and the Gulf, Fo Gulf Coast faithful fired up here to our right of the ICC Alumni Association broadcast booth. That first pitch from Buller. In there for a strike. We give you the Coca-Cola defensive alignment here for Jones after this pitch. You've got Buller in the circle and Stokes behind the plate in the infield. You've got Seal at third, Hawkins at second, shortstop is Holyfield. As this pitch is hit, lifted, drifting, and the left fielder is going to make the play for the out to finish that Coca-Cola starting lineup. At first base is Torrey Dew in the outfield. At left, you've got Lyon. Center fielder is Lawn and Gavin in right field. That is your Coca-Cola defensive alignment here for Jones. Jones leading three to one. Now Cat Campbell, the number nine batter coming to the plate, stands in, takes that first pitch for a strike. That pitch just misses, and not by much. One and one now is the count here on Campbell. She is 0 for 1 on the day as she lined out basically straight to the shortstop her last time up. Lays the butt down. Buller fields it, throws across the way, is in time by a half of a step. If she hesitated for a second on that one, Campbell would have reached safely so quickly two away here now in the bottom of the fifth. So we go back to the top of the lineup. Ashley Hickman, who is 0 for 2 on the day, with a ground out to short and a fly out to left in her last at bat. We'll dig in and try to spark a two-out rally. Swings on this one. Up the middle. Second baseman gets it. Throws across in time. So a three up. Three down. Bottom of the fifth for Gulf Coast. Three to one as we move to the sixth here in the MACJC softball championship game. Jones leading. And hey, welcome back to action as we move now to the top of the sixth inning. The eight, nine, one batters do up here for Jones. That's Gavin, Lyon, and Lawn. Jones leads this one three to one, going for their third straight MACJC softball title. They'll be hosting next week's Region 23 tournament. That can be seen on jcjc.tv. Sean Wansley to my left shakes his head in agreement. That's good because I would have hated to say that and put some extra work on Sean if he wasn't planning on doing it. That pitch low for a ball. One and one is the count. That tournament will feature Jones as the host. Of course, Gulf Coast, Pearl River, and LSU Eunice. And I believe Eunice is the top ranked team in softball. 50 and 2. Jones. Number two, and they're right around 45 and two. That pitch low and inside for a ball. Take a look at Brill. She's starting to labor a little bit out there. She takes a little bit extra time 
after getting the ball back to her as she has thrown a lot of pitches in this tournament. That pitch high and outside for a ball. So Gavin will lead things off for a walk. And I can't emphasize this enough. We've had six straight innings now that Jones has got the leadoff runner on. And that is big time in softball. Danielle Barton will come in as a runner, runner for Gavin. As the umpire is talking to the head coach as he's giving his signals across the way. What this will probably be would be a sub in, sub out type situation. Just reset the uh, reset the uh, defense when they get back in. So Barton at first with no outs. And this is Lyon at the plate. She is 0 for 2 on the day. She grounded out to the pitcher. Her last time up, struck out looking in her first at bat of the day. We've only had two pit stop barbecue strikeouts on the afternoon, one for each team. But laid down nicely to throw to second. Well done that time by Danny Kraft. Nobody covering second, so the runner will advance to second. So a nice job by Kraft. And they're going to talk this one over. Said she took off running. Said she took off running before the pitcher got in the circle. So a nice play by Kraft, backed up by what appears to be a heads-up play by the base runner at first. And Gulf Coast is going to come down and appeal to the home plate umpire. I don't think he's going to be in a position to overrule that as he was having to watch the ball on the bunt to make sure that nobody interfered or if it came back and hit the player or anything like that. So they're going to talk it over, but I do believe the runner went before the player entered the circle in that situation. And they are going to talk this one over once again. So we have a meeting of the minds, if you will. Now, it's my understanding if the runner goes before the ball enters the circle, or maybe she goes on release and the ball enters the circle, she's available to advance to second. And they are going to leave her on second. So a heads-up base running play that time. Basically erase the runner from second, but plug her right back in as line advanced on a very smart running play that time for Jones. There's one out. So we go back to the top of the lineup, and this is CC Lawn. CC flew out to right her last time up. She is one for three on the day. And they're taking a lot of time of explaining this to the Gulf Coast head coach, but now we're ready to play ball. 3 1 is your score. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Jones County leading, trying to build on this two-run lead. There's one out. A runner on second is Lyon, the left fielder. Lyon shows bunt. Throw across the way is not in time. And that's what we talked about, the speed of C.C. Lawn. Pays off that time as she just beat that one. Gulf Coast. Coach going to come out and argue that call as he felt like the throw was in time. It was a bang bang play. And the Gulf Coast coach argument falls on deaf ears. Is that, I'm telling you, that was close. That was really, really close. And now up will be Kimberly Nielsen. There's one out. Runners on the corners. For Nielsen, Jones leading 3-1. to one. This is a very pivotal point of the ball game right now for Gulf Coast. They want to keep this at a two-run game here in the top of the sixth. We'll see if they put Lon in motion 
as she has already exhibited great speed. She does go as hit. Nice play, though, by the third baseman. Gets the out there. The throw home is no throw home. Thought we might have had a chance at a double play, but instead it's a fielder's choice. Now that was an impressive play at third to get Lon, who actually went with the pitch. The run did score. So that was Lyon that scored. Number 20, Tory. As my score sheet is all kind of jumbled up after this, <laughs> this inning. So now, two outs. Swung on. This one lifted, drifting, 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 and it is gone. A two-run home run from Tory Dew and Jones County has broke this one open. And just like that, this thing goes 6-1, and we'll have a Predator Pest Control pitching change for Gulf Coast. We're going to step away, and we'll be back with more right after this. And we're wel welcoming you back. Uh, the Not for sure what was going on as the home plate umpire called for the game manager. But our Predator Pest Control pitching change will bring in Elise Richardson for Gulf Coast. That last two-run home run by Dew gives her 19, at least 19 home runs on the season, which was in the top five, I believe number two in the nation, and pushing 97 RBIs on the season, which leads the nation. As we said, Tory Dew probably in the top five of every batting stat category in the nation. As this is Lauren Holyfield, who stands in and takes the first pitch for a strike. I said it in the earlier game this uh, week. If Tory Dew does not get the NJCAA Player of the Week or Player of the Year, they might as well not have that award. 
as that pitch high for a ball. One and one now goes the count. Once again, not for sure what was going on when they called for the game managers. Gulf Coast had called for them. Andy Kirk went out, and looks like they've got the field crew out, crew out there. I don't see anything on the field. Or any damage, any bases, any anything like that as we, not to brag, but have one of the better field crew in the state who's done a great job this week as there's a dribbler up the middle, and that'll be a base hit. So the hits continue here for Jones as they lead this one 6-1 to one in the top of the sixth. So now it will be Brittany Seal. She is 0 for 3 on the day. One of three batters who hasn't had a base hit. There's two outs here in the top of the sixth. Runner on first and Seal at the plate for Jones. They lead 6 to 1. Seal dribbles one down the line. Foul. 0 and 2 now goes the count. On Seal, we talked about Hawkins wanting to have a big day in front of her friends and family. Well, Seal is also from the Ekru area here in North Mississippi, so she would like to get a hit here in this championship Sunday. There's a shot, and she comes up with one right as we call for it. So her first hit of the day, that's three hits in a row now for Jones. The runners on first and second with two outs, and Mackenzie Hawkins, who is three for three on the day, Coming to the plate. Number 16, Mackenzie Hawkins. So Hawkins trying to add to her big day. Swings on that pitch high, or excuse me, doesn't swing on that pitch high for a ball. Still confused by what was needed earlier. So that pitch finds the corner of the zone. For a strike. That ball in the dirt gets away. Runners will advance. So a base hit by Hawkins. Could push across one, maybe two more runs. As Jones leads this one 6-1. to one. Here in the top of the sixth. 2 1 is the count on Hawkins, the second baseman. That pitch cuts the corner of the plate, evens the count now at 2 and 2. Richardson shakes off the first pitch. Throws that one, grounded, third baseman, gloves, throws across the way, is in time. Oh, foul ball, he says. Bounced off her foot that time. No doubting that one. As I was watching the ball, you saw the both the infield umpire between first and second and the home plate umpire with arms extended indicating the foul ball. So the count stays two and two with two outs. Hawkins reaches out and fouls that one back to keep this at bat alive. Gulf Coast trying to get out of this inning with minimum damage done. Six one is your score, top of the six. Change up just just high. So the count goes 3-2 now on Hawkins. First base is open. There's two outs. Top of the six. Pitch coming back up the middle. Off the pitcher. Throw across the way. is not in time. And Hawkins drives in her second run of the day as Holyfield crosses. And that makes it 7-1 now in favor 
of Jones. Number 15, Bailey Stokes. Now up will be Bailey Stokes. Stokes digging in with runners on the corner. And two outs here in the top of the six. Takes that first pitch for a strike. This foul ball makes it 0-2 now. So 0-2 as Richardson takes a little bit more time getting back to the rubber. Now delivers the pitch. It's hit and fouled off out of play. 0-2 will remain the count. 7-1 is your score here in favor of Jones. As we talked about, one win today by Jones will capture their third straight MACJC state title in softball. This pitch popped up. Trouble. Center fielder charging on. Calls everyone off and makes the play for out number three. Well, Jones... Did some damage there. Four runs on five hits and no errors. They lead 7-1 to as we move to the bottom of the sixth. And welcome back to action as we move now to the bottom of the sixth inning. We do have an explanation of what the break in the action was earlier. A uh, Gulf Coast fan was getting unruly and was asked to leave the ballpark. But luckily nothing more than a few choice words. And the umpires took care of it. And I believe he's probably watching from outside the park right now. Right now, your score seven to one. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Jones leading this one after a four-run top of the sixth. This is Danny Kraft leading things off. Takes that first pitch for a strike on the day. Kraft is 0 for two. She has flew out in foul territory to foul territory to first, and popped out in foul territory to the catcher. This pitch lifted. Center fielder going back and makes the running catch. Over her shoulder, nice play by Lawn in center field. So one away there. So I thought that one might have had enough legs to get over the head of the center fielder. What a nice job that time once again, showing off that speed of Lawn to make the play. Now what would be Emily Davis? She singled and scored a run her last time up. Swings on that first pitch, pops it back, fouling out of play. That pitch high for a ball. 
Once again, we do thank everyone watching here on Let's Go ICC.com. You can watch the replay of the games for the next 30 days on Ustream, and then we'll have them loaded to our full game page on YouTube where you can go back and watch those games as well. Remind you, the Region 23 tournament next week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, will be at Jones County and stream live at jcjc.tv. There's a fly ball, and this time does get over the head of Lawn. Lawn misses it out in center field, and it's going to be a double for Davis. So Davis with her second hit of the day. As that time, the ball got off the bat in a hurry. Actually thought that one could have snuck over the fence, but instead hit about halfway up above the L on Lady Indians and drops for a double. There's a hard hit ball out to left. Left fielder goes over, makes the play, though, for out number two. Well, Gulf Coast getting aggressive at the plate here. That double was the fifth hit of the day for Gulf Coast, and now Brittany Butler will be up trying to spark a two-out rally here as Jones leads Gulf Coast 7-1 to one in the bottom of the sixth. That pitch low for a ball. Jones fans, a few moans and groans after that call. That pitch low for a ball. The player going down to talk to her coach. He was just walking away. Didn't see her coming down there. So after Gaston talks with her head coach, we're ready to play. There's a shot up the middle. They're going to see if they're going to try to score the run. Lawn's going to throw it home. They have a play at the plate, and she is out. So CC Lawn with a great defensive play to start the inning and a great defensive play to end the inning and cut down a run. We have played six. Jones County leading 7-1 to one as we move to the seventh inning. And we're back to action as Jones County comes to the bat here in the top of the seventh. They lead 7-1 seven to one over Gulf Coast. If this lead stands, then Jones will be your 2014 softball champions here in the MACJC. Jones having a pretty good year in sports. As that pitch... Swing and a miss for a strike. 0-2 oh, is a count. In football, you went to the state championship game. South Division champion. 
play in a bowl game. Didn't play in a bowl game this season. It's going down looking is Gavin. Then in women's basketball, won the state title. And, of course, we all know in men's basketball, won the national title, along with the Region 23 title. Uh, in baseball, currently ranked number one in the nation. In softball, on their way to a possible third straight state championship, ranked number two in the nation. Tennis is currently in the national tournament. Women won, national, uh, won, state. Women won the state tournament in tennis. Something tells me if you play a pickup game of bump jacks against Jones right now, you're probably going to lose. So a busy year for Sean Wansley and the crew doing a great job down there at Jones, as well as Bill Snyder. He is actually down in Colin covering the Region 23 golf tournament there for Gulf Coast. Had a chance to speak to him earlier this week. Bill doing a great job for Gulf Coast as well. I got to talk good about Lab because... Lad scares me. He's a big old dude. So the AD over at Gulf Coast as well. That pitch right down the heart of the plate for a strike on Savannah Lyon. Savannah reached on a fielder's choice and scored her last at bat. Officially 0 for 3 on the day. Fouls this one forward as it bounced off her foot. And that one smarts. So see her taking a moment to... Walk it off here at home plate. Three and two is the count here on Lyon. One out. We're in the top of the seventh. Swings on this one, lifts it, and it's going to drop for a single. So a one-out single puts line on first, and now we go back to the top of the inning where CeCe Lawn will come to the plate. She is two for four on the day with a pair of singles. She scored a run. Only one player today for Jones has not had a hit, but she has been effective, and she had a sacrifice fly, that being Bailey Stokes. So one through nine, getting some production today for Jones County. That pitch across the plate for a strike. Even the count now at one and one. There's one out here in the top of the seventh. Jones leading seven to one over Gulf Coast. Line shows butt, but bunts it foul. Remind everybody, if this score stands, we will have the post-game award ceremony here from Fulton on Let's Go ICC, so you'll want to stay tuned for that. So one out, runner on first, CC Lawn swings on that pitch, fouls it off, and strikes her out, then throws her out. Heads up play that time by the catcher. Strike them out, throw them out to end the inning. And I believe now we can officially say we've seen a little bit of everything in this state tournament. Last chance for Gulf Coast. They trail 7-1 to here as we move to the bottom of the seventh.
And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen, as we move now to the bottom of the seventh inning. Last chance here for Gulf Coast as they trail 7-1 to one to number two ranked Jones County. Jones County looking to go for their third straight MACJC softball championship. Brooke Ladner due up here, the third baseman. She singled and drove in a run her last time up. Stands in and takes that pitch for strike one. Muller's second pitch inside for a ball. That pitch just low and outside for ball two. Two and one now goes the count on Ladner. Ladner, Bender, and Richardson do up here in the seventh. That pitch high for a ball. Figure the red light's going to be on here on this one as Gulf Coast needs base runners instead she swings on it hits a single right back up the middle and so Latner with her second hit of the afternoon with a leadoff single here in the bottom of the seventh now up will be the left fielder Coco Bender Coco Bender. Bender officially 0 for 2 on the day reached on an error but the runner was thrown out at third to end the inning and then popped out to first her last time up shows the butt lays it down nicely throw across the way is oh my goodness and the Gulf Coast coach at first base has a legit argument on that one as that's going to be recorded as a sacrifice bunt but that was close I thought Bender had beat that throw that time but instead, it goes for out number one. And now Richardson, who started his DP, is now pitching in. Pops this one up to center field. Center fielder comes in and makes the out. So two away now. With a runner on second is Ladner and Cat Campbell coming to the plate. So Gulf Coast knows they're out to their final out here. So he's wanting to try to make sure gets everyone on the same page. We've seen some rallies here at ICC this season with two outs in this situation. Gulf Coast would have to have a pretty impressive rally here. Two away. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Jones County leading 7-1. to one. The wind blowing back into the ballpark now. As this is Cat Campbell who is 0 for 2 on the day. Takes that first pitch low for a ball. One and zero is the count here on Campbell. Runner on second, swings on that one. Dribbler to third. The throw across the way is in time. Wow! And celebrate Jones as you are the winner of the 2014 MACJC State Championship, the third title in the row in a row for Jones County. Your final score. Seven to one in favor of Jones. As I'm quickly trying to work on my line score, your final line score of the afternoon. Jones County seven fifteen and one. Gulf Coast one six and zero. Oh, as Jones County wins their third straight MACJC state title congratulations to jones and also congratulations to gulf coast on making it to the championship and a great season as well for the lady bulldogs both these teams will go on to play in next week's region 23 tournament at jones county those games once again can be seen at jcjc.com or jcjc.tv thursday friday and saturday we'll have the trophy presentation here so we'll take you down to the field
appreciate you great fans from all schools that came here to Etiwaba to watch these games. The trophies today will be presented by Jim Southward, the MACJC Commissioner. Our congratulations to the second place winner, Gulf Coast Community College Lady Bulldogs. Everyone, please, a big hand. Once again, your final score here from today's championship game, Jones County 7, Gulf Coast 1. We once again want to thank everyone watching here on Let's Go ICC all week. And best of luck to Jones County, Gulf Coast, Pearl River next week in the Region 23 tournament as well as LSU Eunice. So everyone that have been watching, this has been Adam Gore for Let's Go ICC.com. So we'll see you next time, folks.